What's going on, Third Army? Joe here, and today we're gonna to be answering Matt's question, and that is how do you decide on shooter placement on certain pockets? We got three examples here that's gonna kind of tell you different heads, different pockets, and kind of how shooters can be the best or worst thing, uh, depending on how you look at them. So let's get into it. So before we look into the examples, we definitely have to get a baseline for what shooters do. In my opinion, they're some of the least important things, if not the least important thing, um, kind of in a stick between like a shaft, a head, a pocket, a mesh. It's kind of like shooters the last thing. And a lot of people put them way before or way higher up on the list of importance. And I think they then lead to a lot of issues because of this, because um, you're trying to kind of rely on things that aren't very consistent, um, especially if you're not using uh, thrown lights, like if you're using a more like cotton looser woven shooter, the inconsistency can really lead to a lot of issues that people believe are other things when they're really just like your shooter being too tight or too loose or in the wrong row. So I definitely think it's something we could talk about um, an extent later on if this gets more attention, but more so I kind of want to stick to Matt's question, but we just have to know that shooters are inherently kind of dumb. And if you can minimize their effect on your stick and maximize what they actually do, then you got a really, really good stick. So let's think about that and let's move forward. So before we get into examples, we kind of need to get a baseline of what shooters do. In my opinion, they are the least important thing in a stick, but yet, um, people focus on them probably the most, and that leads to a lot of issues because they can uh, really enhance your pocket and make it really, really good, but about 80% of the time, they actually deter from your pocket when you push them too aggressively, and that could be shape, where they are, or if they're too tight or too loose. Um, so I don't wanna go into too much, it kinda be its own subject completely together. Just know that um, if your stick's thrown like crap, it's probably the shooters. So the three examples we're gonna be looking at, we have the instinct head, the fire head, and the finest head, all red themed, didn't plan that, but looks super sick, love these three heads. Uh, of course, all of these are strung with thrown lace, which is uh, what comes in all of our stringing kits. Um, if you guys don't know about it, I'll go through it really quickly, but I think most of you guys know about it. This is the shooter lace that we uh, kind of developed probably four or five years ago now, and it's far superior, in my opinion, to everything else on the market. It's not a hockey lace or a shoelace cut extra long and thrown in a lacrosse stick. Uh, its biggest benefits is it doesn't really stretch out, it's not super elastic, and it's not uh, very loose, meaning it'll kind of break down and let the ball catch on it, like you see with a lot of kind of like hockey style shooters. Um, in my opinion, they are far superior. If you haven't checked them out, definitely do. So first up, we have the Instinct. This is a command low with a type A pocket. Um, all of these are gonna have three shooters at maximum. I could talk at length why four shooters uh, kind of get you into more trouble than it's worth, uh, but I think mostly just based on pretty much 90% of you are gonna be using the new NCA rules where you can't use any shooters lower than four inches from the top of the scoop. So your shooter setup is mostly going to look something like this, and then some tweaks with evolution um, as we go along, because we're actually gonna go in kind of in terms of like things that have changed in terms of the understanding of shooters. So first up, this is kind of what you're gonna see in probably 70% of people's sticks are two straight shooters and then a shooter cord at the top. This is what we pretty much supply in all of our kits and uh, it's what I recommend for a good majority of sticks. Pretty much the shooters as low as they can go in the head. Um, this one you could probably go down another half row. So pretty much what you wanna do is measure four inches from here and you wanna put your bottom shooter there, skip, put another one, skip, put your nylon. And the reason that they aren't a lower, like another half diamond it could probably go is because this head actually flares pretty high compared to some of the other heads or the next head that we're going to look at and the ball would actually get caught. And now there's like six or seven different ways you can figure this out. Mostly it's put the shooters in where you think, go throw with it. If it throws down, your shooters are too low. Uh, the other way is to actually look at the stick this way and try to see where the ball width, so like the pocket is usually, try, we try to make it a ball width, so the mesh goes on the sides of the ball and gives you the most amount of contact, giving you the most amount of hold and feel. You wanna go up one diamond from where the transition goes from the side to the flat. So this might be a little bit hard to see on camera, but you can see the really comes up to right about here and then it goes, starts to go to the flat, meaning it's panning out to where the starts, the ball starts going from the deepest part of the pocket, starting to release. And you want the shooter one kind of row up for that. And what that'll do is that'll give you kind of the, the most consistent um, release of the stick. Uh, it's going to be high enough to where it's not gonna get too caught and not low enough, or sorry, high enough to where it's gonna give you some nice feel and get the ball out of the stick and not too low where it's gonna catch on it. Cause that's your biggest thing. Kind of the golden rule is you want your shooters as low as you can go within that four inches, 
uh, without the ball throwing down. And with a head like this, with this flare, this is definitely the best setup you're going to go for. Just really know this is your baseline. Um, and if you take this and there's not enough whip or there's not enough hold, then you can start dropping the shooters kind of in that four inch realm. And that's what we have in the next setup. Next up, we have the Firehead. This is a Command 2, and you can see it has the same shooter set up, but in a different position than the head before it. And the real reason for this is this head is much wider towards the top, so we're able to drop the shooters down without it affecting the ball, um, becoming too tight and really pinching that ball when it goes to release, which would cause too much whip and throw the ball down. And you can really see that here, one head is much wider than the other, uh, so we're able to drop them down and stay, again, within those four inches. Uh, this will add more hold to the ball, and it will add a little bit more whip, a little bit more snap to it um, as it comes out because it's a more dramatic bump up out of the pocket. Um, as you can see here, probably the best way to explain it is since this one's higher and really across that flat, and one diamond up from where we see that transition point, the, the shooter lays really flat across there. It's going to have such a clean transition. It's going to give you the same feel over and over. Um, this is something that I really love in a stick. I just want it to be consistent. And really with thrown mesh strung the right way, you don't really need any more hold than, um, than what you're gonna get from this stick. But if you do, or if you like that feel, um, there is something you can do. So you can drop the shooters down another row, again, staying within that four inches, but four inches, but you can see here that the shooter actually starts to ripple. And the reason for this is you're actually asking the shooter to bend. You can see it's actually arcing within a straight line of the mesh. So as something tapers off, the bottom gets smaller, which is pushing the shooter up, so it can't lay as flat. And I, I think you guys can understand this, as the ball starts to exit, if this shooter isn't as flat and it's bulkier, it's gonna grab more on that ball, which of course is gonna give you more hold, but then also give you more whip and can be uh, less consistent as it can be with something that is more flat. So I do recommend this for heads that um, are a little bit wider, because if not, you'll kind of get that like rock in a bowl type feel as opposed to the ball being a pre completely set in there. Uh, but do know it's going to be less consistent than doing it the other way. Um, and it's really just a trade-off. There's a lot of times I string wider heads like this, like I believe I did for the Venomancer. I think I strung it exactly the same. And then when I got like two games into the tournament, I actually ended up going to this third setup, which was kind of uh, the happy medium between the two of these. And what we're starting to see more and more of, people going to even simpler shooter setup that is a little bit uh, more dynamic. So uh, this is the drop three shooters, and next we're gonna get into a two shooter setup. Finally, we have our Bravest head. This is an Epic Z1 with a tight K pocket in it. And as you can see, we went to two shooters. We have uh, just the lace and the cord, so we got rid of that middle lace to it. This is a very popular kind of um, option right now on our website is the Type K. And really what this is, is in my opinion, is kind of the best of both worlds. Um, I've actually been using this on my setup for the, probably the past like seven or eight months. Really like the way this works out. So pretty much what you're going to be doing with this is you're gonna do that kind of same over channeling as we did with this one. But instead of putting it as low as we can, we're kind of putting up a little bit higher. And then by dropping that nylon and making it a little bit tighter, we're kind of getting that nice hold and snap and kind of structure in here to really feel that ball um, and really keep it in there. But also when you go to follow through, the ball is jumping out of the pocket a little bit later than it is with some of the other ones, preventing some of that whip and uh, inconsistencies that you can find. Uh, this is definitely something I see me using forward. I think a lot of people, if you haven't tried this, definitely do. And again, what it is, it's the same setup as the first head, uh, this instinct, which is, you know, you see everyone using. All you're gonna do is get rid of that middle one, drop the nylon down and make it a little bit tighter than you would because there's only those two shooters in it. And I find it really effective. And the final thing we're gonna talk about is kind of return and what you're able to get with uh, different shooter setups. And the final thing I wanted to touch on is kind of head shape, going back to that video from last week and kind of talking about the shooter setup and what you can get away with. Uh, first up, you know, here's our baseline. As you can see, it's a nice kind of mid, mid, low, and then just the return is nice and straight. That's why those shooters are straight. That's why this head is gonna perform in pretty much all conditions um, and really not be amazing at anything, but really do everything pretty damn well and uh, be very, very consistent. And then when we get into the next head, actually, I'm gonna try and put them up next to each other. You can see this one just is more aggressive in pretty much every manner. It's way flatter in here. And then the return is, is way more of a hook. And by dropping those shooter setup um, in this, it's gonna give you a lot more hold, a lot more uh, aggression into it. And you can see how curved that bottom shooter setup is. And that really is dictated kind of how much you're able to pull down that mesh 
to match this type of head, which has totally different geometry. Uh, but then when it gets to that nylon at the top, we're really releasing it in here, which is kind of nice. Uh, something I probably should have touched on. The, the nylon that we use and have been using for years and really have made a standard, uh, what this really does is it changes the release point of the head completely. Uh, instead of having the ball be able to push in all the way up through the top of the stick, that nylon really likes it release uh, way earlier. Um, and, and that's what we really like. I really don't like hitting off the top of the plastic. Very few people do, but the people that do love that, and that's their own thing. Uh, but I find it to make the sticks very inconsistent. So by putting this nylon in it, we can kind of guarantee where that ball is gonna eventually release. And that allows you a lot more freedom now underneath that to kind of change where that feeling's coming from. So that's why we always use this nylon and why it's totally different than the other ones. Uh, it does pretty much the same thing as the other ones, but to an extreme, and that's why it's always on the top. And then finally with this head, the reason we can get away with using so little shooters on this, you can use this with pretty much any head. I mean, hell, you could probably just use one shooter on this stick. And that's because the release is so much pushed forward here. Like even we thought this command, the release was pushed forward being nice and flat along the ball come out, super consistent. But this head, they've went to even an extreme where the real flattest part of the return is actually somewhere in here, not up here. And even in this one, you can see the returns all the way up. Uh, which is totally different. That's why this head feels totally different, has that super quick release, and the shooter setup really goes well with that because we're able to make the ball release so much lower in the head, giving a super nice quick release uh, with just an absurd amount of accuracy and really no issues at all when it comes to inconsistencies. Matt, I hope that answered your question. It definitely touched on kind of the broad idea of shooters and kind of where they're in place. So first of all, gotta remember that four inch rule. Second off, you wanna look at the geometry of your head and kind of what makes sense in terms of where you can place them. Um, and that's really based on if you want some whip or if you want no whip, if you want consistency, if you want more accuracy, if you want more power. Uh, it's a trade-off between those. And in my opinion, there's no real right answer for all of it. And that's why you see a lot of thrown sticks come with the same shooter setup because we know how it's going to work kind of in that situation. And then we would be able to tweak it or help you guys tweak it to make it work to your game. Um, I definitely know in sticks that I still string for myself, even though it's just the W4 over and over again, that uh, sometimes when I'm out throwing around and playing and I get in a game and I get out of a game, um, I don't feel 100% on the stick that I know where it's gonna go every single time. And 90% of that time, it's a shooter change, um, depending on if it's tension, placement, removing one. Um, it's very rarely sidewalls or throat string or shaft or anything else. Uh, really getting that kind of like perfection level out of your pocket and really know where it's going is really understanding how the shooters work, breaking them in and making them work for you and not against you. And a lot of time they are working against you. So just remember always bottom one, the loosest, top one, the tightest. And if you can't figure it out, just take it out because it's just gonna get in your way of playing the game we all love. If you learned something, please throw the video a like. And if you have a question you want me to answer, throw it down in the comments below. We are continuing our 20% off sale to uh, help you guys deal with being inside uh, for the sealable future, uh, which is 20% off when you use the coupon code stay safe on throwingthecross.com. As always, I'll have all that info in the description below. It's everything, hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the field.